Refresh rate, something that seems to be a pretty important specification these days. To an extent, a lot of people are now expecting a high refresh rate display on every flagship smartphone. Only one mainstream smartphone has it, the OnePlus 7 Pro with a 90Hz display. And immediately after, people are like, why doesn't the Note 10 have it? Why is there no rumor about the upcoming iPhone's refresh rate? So what is refresh rate? Do you need a high refresh rate display like 90Hz or 120Hz? Or is it all just a gimmick? I'll be answering all these questions in this video, so hang on, let me introduce myself. My name is Ashwin Sundar, this is Technology Jock. If you end up learning something from this video, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. Guys, there's a very important, interesting test result I'd like to show you at the end of the video. It's about how big the difference is between 60 Hz and 90 Hz. So do watch till the end. So let's begin with what is refresh rate. In a single line, refresh rate is the rate at which the display refreshes. Of course, you will murder me if I just stop there. So let's go deeper into the concept. The refresh rate of your phone's display is probably 60 Hz, which means it's capable of displaying 60 images every second. But whether it actually displays 60 images every second or fewer than that depends on the content you're watching. Almost all of my videos are shot at 24 frames per second, which means the video consists of 24 images every second. So it doesn't matter whether you have a 60 Hz display or a 90 Hz display, as in it doesn't matter if your display can show 60 or 90 images every second, because anyway, my video has only 24 images to show. Now I shot this video alone in 60 FPS just to show you the difference. If you've been watching Technology Jog, you would know this video is a lot smoother. Almost all phones, all TVs, all monitors have a minimum refresh rate of 60 Hz. So since this video is shot at 60 frames per second, you will be able to notice the difference. This is 60 FPS, this is 30 and this is 15 FPS. So just because the display's refresh rate is 60 Hz, doesn't mean whatever you're viewing on your display is as smooth as this video. It depends on the content that's being displayed. Think of refresh rate as a speed limit. Let's say the speed limit is around 60 km per hour. Doesn't mean everyone drives at 60. Okay, that was a bad example. Give me another chance. Let's consider a tap or even better a water pipe, a, a tube. You've seen small tubes in hospitals used in drip kits like this. You've seen large pipes as well, at your home probably. Let's just say the speed of the water flow is constant. It doesn't change. Now the large pipe can carry a huge amount of water. It is capable of carrying a lot. But it doesn't mean it always carries that much water. The amount of water it actually carries depends on what the pipe is being used for. If the pipe is used at home, when you take a shower, the pipe won't really carry that much water. Uh, it would probably be a few liters every minute, but if that same pipe is used to drain a huge tank, obviously it will carry much more water. Similarly, when it comes to refresh rate, let's say you have a OnePlus 7 Pro, it has a 90 Hz display, but most of the content that you're consuming don't display 90 images every second. For example, the maximum frame rate supported by YouTube, Netflix, Amazon Prime, etc. is 60 frames per second. So it doesn't matter if you're watching Netflix on a 90Hz OnePlus 7 Pro or a 60Hz iPhone, it's gonna be the same experience, the exact same experience. So what kind of content can actually make use of the high refresh rate? Number one, the user interface. Number two, some commonly used apps. Number three, some games. On PCs, games can even run at 240fps, but on smartphones, Currently, only a bunch of games support 90 and 120 FPS. The list has a few popular games, but also misses some other ones. PUBG, for instance, doesn't support 90 FPS gameplay. Check the description for the list of games that support high refresh rate. But even on that list, some games will be able to cross 60 FPS, but may not reach 90 or 120 FPS. And even those games that can reach 90 or 120 FPS may not do it in real life usage, because to actually see super smooth gameplay, the display's refresh rate and the game's high frame rate are not enough. 
We need a powerful chip as well that's capable of rendering 90 or 120 images every single second. It is by no means an easy task. Logically speaking, till date, most phones with a high refresh rate display have a flagship SoC like Snapdragon 855 or 845, but even those chips might not be enough in some circumstances. Remember PUBG gameplay at HDR graphics setting plus extreme FPS, which is 60 FPS, is quite good. But if you play for a long time, say one or two hours, you'll start noticing some lag, minor lag, not a big deal, on some phones. But imagine doubling the frame rate, 120 FPS instead of 60 FPS. The 855 chip is still capable, but generally, if you play continuously for more than 15 minutes at 90 or 120 FPS, the chip is at its peak performance and the phone tends to heat a lot and eventually the chip will throttle. Throttle as in to avoid the phone from getting too hot, to avoid the phone from getting damaged, the chip slows down and you will start seeing stutters in the game. So this is why almost all phones with a high refresh rate display have a dedicated cooling system, cooling solution. The ROG phone actually has an add-on fan that you could attach to the phone for even better cooling. The OnePlus 7 Pro's cooling system might not be that good, but it still uses liquid cooling, so sustained gaming performance is decent even at 90 FPS. Note that I say decent because you will see some lag here and there. Uh, here is a frame rate test on Opera browser. It says browser stutter detected sometimes, not all the time. So when it's happening on something as light as a browser, obviously in something as heavy as a high graphics game, a slight drop in frame rate every now and then is expected. So where else can you actually feel the 90 Hz or 120 Hz goodness? We just saw one of those things, Opera browser and the likes. As in many commonly used apps like Reddit, Twitter, etc. support high frame rate output. And while the user interface also supports high refresh rate, realistically speaking, None of us spend more than a few minutes navigating through system apps or scrolling through the app drawer or swiping through the app switcher. Those are rare occasions. So all that being said, let me talk about the test result that I mentioned in the beginning. Can you actually notice a big difference between 60 and 90 Hertz? As you all know by now, the OnePlus 7 Pro has a 90 Hertz display. It has two options in settings, 60 and 90 Hertz. Even when you select 90 Hertz, it doesn't always display 90 images every second. If the phone detects that the content is not more than 60 FPS, it changes the refresh rate to 60 Hz. So when you're playing PUBG, the refresh rate of the display is actually 60 Hz, even though you chose 90 Hz in settings. If you go back to the home screen, it's 90 Hz. So basically this 90 Hz option is not actually 90 Hz, it's 90 Hz wherever applicable. Now, Google Chrome initially supported 90 Hz, but for some weird reason, after a recent update, it supports only 60 Hz now. So if you choose 90 Hz in settings, if you're using Chrome, the refresh rate is set to 60 Hz automatically. A lot of people did not know about this, so I decided to do a little experiment. I asked my Twitter followers to use Chrome at both 60 Hz and 90 Hz settings and asked them if they found any difference. Shockingly, the majority of them said they found a noticeable difference. In reality, the last option is the right answer. Now, of course, realistically speaking, not all votes are from actual OnePlus 7 Pro users. It's very unlikely for that to happen. But still, I'm sure at least a bunch of OnePlus 7 Pro users felt there was a huge difference. So it's more of a perception than reality. It's just the hype. Oh my God, 90 Hertz is so smooth. I can't live without it anymore. But the truth is, as we just saw in the poll results, a lot of people cannot actually find a difference. Now, don't get me wrong, the difference is noticeable, but not to an untrained eye. The difference between 30 Hz and 60 Hz is definitely noticeable. I showed you the difference earlier, right in this video. Between 60 and 120, that's also quite noticeable, but between 60 and 90, not that much. People like me who have been looking at a monitor, TV, smartphone for like 12 to 14 hours every single day, can notice the difference quite easily. And it really enhances the experience, to be honest, but for the majority of people, 60 Hz is smooth enough. Maybe if people use 90 Hz for a long time and then try 60 Hz, they'll notice the difference and they may not like 60 Hz anymore. Now, you may ask, what's the big deal? Higher the refresh rate, the better it is. It doesn't matter if we don't notice any difference sometimes. 
Well, the big deal is high refresh rate takes a toll on the battery life. Since the display has to show an extra 30 or 60 images, the battery life gets affected significantly. That's why the latest ROG Phone 2 comes with a 6000 mAh battery. And while I was using the OnePlus 7 Pro at 90Hz, it wasn't easy to get through one full day on a single charge. Remember, it has only a 4000 mAh battery. A little bit of gaming at 90Hz would make sure you will have to charge your phone before your day gets over. So, what's the conclusion? High refresh rate displays are definitely the future. In fact, I think 120Hz, not 90Hz, will be the future because like I said, the difference between 60 and 120 is much more noticeable. So I think that's what smartphone brands will be aiming for eventually. But I don't see YouTube or Netflix or any video streaming app to support anything more than 60 FPS in the future. Because the content is at 60 FPS max. But of course, more and more games, including PUBG, will start supporting high refresh rate. A lot of apps can already make use of it. But should it become a mainstream feature right now? like an ultra wide angle camera or type C port, maybe not. With the existing battery technology, the phones will be very thick if they have to carry like 6000 or 7000 mAh battery. So we need a new battery tech, which is most probably graphene. That's an entirely different video by itself. Uh, now your argument is, if there's an option to switch to 60 Hertz, then what's the big deal? Now, some of you may argue battery life doesn't matter. Like we can switch to 60 Hertz. There is an option in every phone, right? Well, the big deal is you are paying more for the phone for having a 90 Hertz display. The cost to replace a OnePlus 7's display is around 6,900 rupees. The cost to display a 7 Pro's display is around 16,000 rupees. Of course, the curved nature of the display has to be taken into account too, but high refresh rate displays are more expensive and you're paying for that, whether or not you're using it to its full potential.